uh, URLs and the versions and the packaging you know, names, those, those, those would change. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, I see Uma and Martin, both of um, you guys here. Do you want to talk about uh, uh, initial coding that we mentioned last time? Or give an update or just, um, you know, have, um, uh, have it have some time, time spent on explaining the design of it or do um, you think we should do it in the next session? Up to you next. I think it's good to start uh, about the high level design or concept without too much details about the offline recovery and all of the low level technical details just to be on the same side because I'm pretty sure that that part won't be changed. So we are, we are working to publish the V3 designed up from the Erasure coding, but the main part, what we, which is, uh, so that there is one part which is not yet uh, finished, but it's mostly about the implementation details and technical details. But I think the high level concept, it's, uh, it's we can say it's finished or we have a, a good understanding. So that's what we can share today. Maybe a half hour, okay, it should be enough. So if there is no other topic, I'm happy to talk about this one. And Uma also can add all of your comments. Yeah, agree. Okay. I have a whiteboard, so I can just... So this is a file. So let's talk about just Ozone, not about erasure coding. So today, we are splitting the uh, any file to smaller chunks and we are just uploading, oh, this is, okay, uploading them one by one to two blocks, right? It's an easy file because it fits in a, to one block, but it's possible that we need multiple blocks to store the chunks. That's, uh, but let's talk about just one block first because it's more simple. Uh, and uh, the main concept is that we can use almost the same API, but there is one big difference. So let's move the file back. That today we have multiple container instances. By default, we have three. And we have a replication between them. So if I just upload the uh, if we upload the chunk one, it will be eventually replicated by Redis to the other instances. So the container one is the same container, but we have three nodes. This is node one, this one. Oh. This is node two and node three. And the containers are supposed to be exactly the same. That's the trick. That's that's why we have Redis, right? Because we should have some consensus between the instances and they should be exactly the same. But actually they are three different instances. And the only big difference between this one and EC that we will use the uh, different instances in different way because the, I'm not sure. So when we are talking about erasure coding in, in generic way, what we are doing is that we are doing some smaller chunks from the data and we are generating some kind of uh, parity blocks in a very tricky way. So this is parity in a very tricky way that if we lose for example, this chunk, then we can uh, recreate it from the parity and and uh, and other chunks. But the important part is that these chunks are different. And if we are continue the work, then we will do it with the chunk four, five, six. That's the main part of the erasure coding. And we would like to do it on chunk level. So first chunk will be uploaded to the first container instance, the second chunk will be uploaded that second container instance. So they are not the same anymore. So we need to differentiate between them instance two. But this is the same container 
container instance. Uh, same container. So the container is ID one, but we have three instances. Oh, actually more because I need to store the parity blocks as well. So just let me create more instances. Okay, so it's node node four, node five. Okay, so it, this is the chunk three. And I have a container instance four and five. This is erasure coding three, two, which means that I have three chunks and for each of the three chunks, I'm creating two parity blocks. Mm, yes, something like this. And the next chunk can be uploaded to here. The interesting uh, thing with this approach that we used exactly the same API as before. Today, what we have on the data node side is just chunk write and put block. We can use exactly the same, right? The only trick is that when I read, today when we read something, what we do is just, this is me, and I'm trying to read this one. We are just reading all the chunks today from one uh, node. We did erasure coding, it's more tricky because what I should do is just first read the chunk from here, then here, then here, then chunk four from here, from here and so on. So this is a client side change, but still everything is exactly the same as uh, before. There is one particular difference is that this instance should be known. So the so there is somewhere an OZO manager somewhere here. And the OZO manager, we have key to container mapping or something like this. And I can map the wall one, bucket one, key one to container one. So this is exactly the same what we have today. It's mapped to the container group, right? And but today we have three instances from each of the container. This is exactly the same, but I will have five instances from the container and the instances will be different. That's the only trick. But all, all the others are, other thing is the same. I can do it without modifying any server side, unless I need some, need to do some recovery. Okay, this is not fully through that, almost without modification. And I need disparity and disparity. Okay, next, next thing is the block. We have exactly the same container ID and different instance uh, index on the container ID. So I know that this is, this container is container one, but it plays the first data role in this erasure coding group. When we are talking about this mapping, it's not this, but this is a full block ID, which means that I have a container ID and a local ID, right? That's the that's how the block IDs look like. So this is exactly the same block ID everywhere. Block one, block one, block one. Which means that if I have a block ID for one key, which is a block ID has two parts, the container ID and the local ID, local ID. So this is exactly the same here, 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 here. Let's say one, one, container one, block one. But the content is different. If I read the first chunk from this container one, block one, it will be different from this. And the differentiator is this instance or, or, or role ID. That's the, that's the main difference. And on chunk level, yeah, so today when we write the chunk, we have an offset and length. Offset zero, length, let's say four megabytes. This is because we would like to use exactly the same API. We need to fill this offset and length. Today it shows 
the position of the chunk in the block. But here, we need to use exactly the same metadata, right? This is offset zero length zero in this block instance. So this is a block instance, not the full block one. And here, this is exactly the same offset zero length four, because this is the offset in the local block file. But this chunk, actually, this is an offset uh, eight megabyte in the in the original file itself. So this is just the logical offset. And here I can continue with offset four megabytes and length four megabytes, something like this. So that would be the logic of the of the write. And the client uh, should be smart enough to open a lot of independent stream to each of the data nodes when it writes or read. So the write part is uh, it's especially tricky because we need to calculate disparities. So when the client starts to write, I need to put it to a buffer similar to the current buffers. So this is in my local buffer. I can upload this one. That's not a problem. Upload it. And when I, okay, let me, let me clean up my server. Okay. This is my second chunk. I can upload it to here, but still I need the data. I need the third chunk. Oh, this is the third chunk. I can upload it, but still I need to keep it in the memory. And at this time, I can calculate the parity. And both the parities, if they are calculated from these data, I calculated parity one, parity one and parity two, I can upload them here and here. And now I can clean up this buffer and I can continue with the chunk four. That's how does it work. And uh, parity, parity, yeah. And it, it, I can just continue the same way. The important part is that at this point, when I cleaned up the buffer, because I have all of the chunks, that's uploaded well, right, with the chunk write. At this point, I can do the put block. So the put block is the commit of the data, which creates the uh, metadata in the RocksDB. So at this time, I can do a put block to all of the servers at the same time. And if it's committed on the majority of the servers, then I can say that this is committed and I can continue the work. So let's say this put block is successful on here, 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 but it may not be successful here because it, for some reason it's not fully, let's say the node five is broke, was um, down at the, or broken or something like this. It's not a problem because this parity can be reproduced from the other data. And the only important part is because we don't have Redis here. Without Redis, I need a consensus. I should know if this chunk is good or not, if it's uploaded or not. But because this is just an append only data structure, it's very easy to understand what's uh, uh, uploaded. The only thing what we need to do is just check the majority of the servers. And the same is true for the for reading. So let's say I don't have Ozone Manager at all, which includes the, the block data. Even without Ozone Manager, I can just check the metadata. And if the metadata shows that I have, uh, so let's say this server, this server, and this server, four, five, six. So if I have the metadata of all of these chunks, it means that it was a su successful write. So I, have to, I had two chunk writes in all of the blocks. Yes, they are missing here, even on the metadata level, but it means some that I need to recover. No problem, I can recover it anytime. So that's the main uh, concept for the chunk level erasure coding. 
earlier we considered a few other approach like it is to call the full container but no we are talking about doing everything on the chunk level and we need some recovery pro we we are planning to do two kind two recovery process one is an online recovery which means that if this chunk is missing the client itself can uh, recover it during the read so if the client reads it should connect to multiple data nodes anyway especially if it if this file is more than three chunks and if it's missing we can just uh, start to recover it from the other data so let's recover it in it can be recovered in memory so it will be recovered and we can continue the read that's how does it work and we will have a different recovery process to recover it permanently this is the offline recovery so the data nodes will be scanned for missing chunks missing blocks missing data and it will be permanently recovered uh, sooner or later by a background process is there any question until now No question. I don't know whether it's here or it's too maybe yes. Yeah, okay. It's too easy or too complex. So the two <laughs> two possibilities. Okay, then let's uh, talk a few other high level uh, problems. Let's talk about uh, the offline recovery on high level without all of the details. So what we need here is let's forget about the client there is no client we had we have an scm somewhere this is our scm friend actually not our friend this this scm is friend of the nodes so all of the nodes are reporting that container one instance one is here instance two so there is one option when the instance two is missing so if that is this is missing, it's very similar to the current process. The SCM can detect that, okay, missing container instance, I need to create one. So it will be created somehow. The tricky part is that there is a situation when we have a problem during the write. So let's say the chunk, chunk four, five, this is the six. So this chunk five can be missing. Because if the upload is was broken to this data node during the write, it's possible that we are just uh, writing, 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 and we can tolerate this uh, error because everything is fine. We have more than enough data to recover it anytime. And the client can recover as well, but long term, we need to recover it. So somehow I need to detect that this one is this one is missing. The SCM has no idea that what's going on because this data node we reported, okay, container one instance two, I have it. This one, we report that, oh, container instance, container one instance one, I have it. So the SCM has no information about the block level metadata. This is uh, as true as uh, in the current uh, design. So SCM is just about container replication. But eventually we need to check this uh, these containers if they include all of the blocks or all of the chunks because the same is true for the blocks so the block might be missing or the block might might be just a partial block so the idea is that scm can ask one of the data nodes in the group that oh node one you are my best friend can you please check the container one is if it's really good and the node one, actually here we need an information, oh, not here. So here we need an information. So it's very, very similar to the existing uh, replication command, but we need to ask the node one, okay, check container one and sources are node two, node three, node four, node five. So this is a message. 
and the node one, it has all of the block level information. The SEM has no, no information about the block level data, but node one has it. Node one exactly knows that, okay, in this container one, at least on my side, I can see one block and a lot of chunks. And it can ask all of the other data nodes that, oh, oh, what do you have? What do you know about this uh, container one? I have the container two instance two from the container one, but only one block and one chunk. This can be reported back and it can be compared here. And if something is missing, it can be requested. So this is the coordinator node and the coordinator node can request data recovery that, hey, node two, something is missing from you. Can you please recover the block one? And the node two will start and do this one. One additional point that it can be very hard. So we wouldn't like to move all of these chunk information to the block one. So there will be some block commit sequence ID or some counter, which is very similar to the block commit sequence ID uh, in each block that how many, how many chunks are there? So let's say this is a sequence ID, which means that I have six chunks and I have six chunks. I have, and we, because this is added with the put block, if, if every, if, okay, I have just one chunk. So it's enough to get all of the metadata and based on the metadata, we can have the information about which blocks are out of um, uh, sync, which blocks should be recovered. Because based on this information, we know that, okay, we have less chunks, something is wrong. So this block should be checked that what, what should we, we do. And this metadata is part of the put block. So if we need, so the data nodes will uh, agree on this metadata, or at least the majority of the data nodes should agree on the uh, metadata, because this is how did we write to the servers. So that's the high level overview of the offline recovery is that container level problems can be identified by SCM, block level problems or missing blocks or con missing blocks can be identified by a coordinator node. For the sake of simplicity, first, the SCM will do it only after the containers are uh, full. So it's very similar to the current design. If the container is full, we can say that, okay, no more data, this is read only from now, and we can do the recovery from, from that time, just to make it easier to handle all of the concurrency. It seems to be possible to do it earlier and we will consider it to make it earlier if it's uh, required, but that's uh, what we uh, will do first. Okay, any more questions? No more question. I will. I will talk at least six additional minutes. So it's better to have questions. <laughs> oh, one one quick question. Uh, yeah. The meeting recordings um, are they available somewhere? Pardon. What? These meetings Which get recorded, recordings? right? Yeah. Yes. This 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 is recorded. And uh, when I don't forget, I share it with, um, I, I create a meeting minutes and I uh, share it. But the, there was a discussion about this in a few months ago, and it was suggested to delete the recording after a few weeks. So I think the recordings by default are deleted. Yeah, yeah but, but if I just wanted to, uh, I, I might want to go back through some of this. Uh, yeah, uh, sure. And yeah, so, so what I'm planning to do is just to cut this part and actually we can do the same uh, that the design discussions can be can be cut from this uh, informal meetings 
and hmm. it can be shared on the YouTube channel, for example, or anywhere. For me, it's easier to upload to the YouTube channel, just the design part. That's the that's my plan with this uh, recording because that can be can be more persistent, Great. but not Sounds the good. other parts, just the design part. And, and the design document maybe... will also will be published. Pardon? No, no, nothing, nothing. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's that's the plan. Great. Okay, just two additional. Okay, I'm just. I like the details, and I would like to show just one more tricks. And I'm trying to simplify this one. So let's say this is a small file, so small that it's even just two chunks. I don't need this one, this one, this one. So this is, oh, actually, this is a very small file. This is this one. OK, how do we know if, OK, let's say this is this is exactly two chunk big. How do we need, how, how do we know if this chunk is missing or this is just a short one? Well, that's one reason why we commit the metadata at the same time, because even to this node, we can commit an empty chunk. So we will commit the metadata that, OK, but this will be a chunk three with offset equals zero, length equals uh, zero, something like this. But because the because so we don't we don't need to store the data, but we need to store the metadata. This one actually it should be stored offset zero. And this is length four megabyte, but actually, this is the parity of the zero to twelve megabyte because this is the parity for this one, this one, this one, and it should be a four megabyte block because even if this is zero data, this is real data. So this is some kind of uh, parity based on the data, data, and uh, zero data. We don't need to store the zero data, but uh, it will be used for the calculation. Yeah, so I let's say I have, yeah. Uh, Martin, one more point. I think we we decided to update the block group length uh, part of the last food block so that we know the length of that block boundary, block group boundary, so that based on that, we can decide whether this node three's block is really uh empty or it has some content uh so there could be a chance that when you're writing node 3 might not be available so we you would just interleave the node 3 and you would continue writing node 1 node 2 and then you generate the node 4 and node 5 so you would we would not even have any of the metadata available in node 3 because we we haven't written anything here uh, when we are writing so yeah. to identify that we uh we we would also update the yeah, block group length. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I simplified that. a little bit here. So that was some of, we already discussed that we have this sequence ID and the other thing what we uh, which is very similar and it also can help us to identify the blocks or the missing parts without checking one by one all of the data is this these uh, lengths, which means that the full block supposed to be in this case, it's four megabytes, right? I just uh, didn't uh, draw all of the details, but that's but that's totally true. Yeah. One other thing, what I would I planned to mention, and that if I play the same one with multiple blocks here and here, then eventually I will have two containers, which are big. And I will have an empty container because I just did a lot of padding here, right? It's just metadata. And when I read, let's say I have just this one. And when I read, I will use just this node, this node, this node. This node are totally useless. 
the, we have the parity in case of emergency, but if there is no emergency, I will use just this one and this one and this one, right? So we, this is a more or less independent question. So we can do any time um, permutation for the next blocks and say that, okay, for the second block in the same container, we will start from here. And in that case, the parity block will be placed to here. Still, we have multiple IDs that how it can be uh, permutated, but this is not a significant change on the concept. This is something which can be considered. So this is just shows the complexity of this. Okay, this is the main idea how it will be placed, but under the hood that may be a little bit different because we have two options on the table actually. One is that do a block level shuttling or we can do chunk level shuttling, which means that here the next chunk will be a parity and here the next chunk can be a data data chunk that also means that I have a full chunk here. So that's one more thing. What? Okay, I think we are at the end of the time, but this is the high level concept and I'm working to finalize, we do more and, and others to finalize this uh, uh, design and publish it, but hopefully this short introduction can help you to understand all because they will be significant longer. The design doc, is, I think it will, it will be quite long, but this is the concept and maybe it can be easier to understand all of the details if you, if you have this big picture. Any other question? No more questions. Any other non EC related questions? Hey, Martin. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm also interested in the recording. I got distracted with the escalation uh, on the other side from customer. So, um, yeah, so if, if, do we have a wiki page where we put these things? I think we, uh, it's, this is a good start. So I think going forward, we can have one place where we can just put the part of the talk, which uh, part of the community meeting that was a design discussion, like you just suggested, right? Yeah, that, that's the plan. My plan was just to start a one additional YouTube uh, channel or YouTube playlist, but yeah, we can, we can also, we need to upload it to somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I either link it from the country community call. Yeah, we can, we can, we can link it from, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Or yeah, we can. We should also link it from the from the gyra issue. I think. <laughs>